Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 1997 Putnam exam. So this is question A4. And what I think is most interesting about this question is it outright uses some notions from abstract algebra in the statement. So sometimes you can use the notions of a group or other ideas from abstract algebra in a solution, but it's very rare for those things to seep into the statement of the problem. Okay, so let's look at this. So we wanna let G be a group and the identity is labeled by E, which is standard notation. And then we've got a function phi from G to G, such that if A, B, C equals E equals X, Y, Z, where there we've done the group operation on either side, then phi of A times phi of B times phi of C equals phi of X times phi of X times phi of Z. Okay, and what we wanna do is find a G so that we can define a new function, psi, so that psi x equals g times phi of x, and that new function is a homomorphism. So real, kick, real quick, I wanna recall what a homomorphism is. So a function phi from a group g1 to another group g2 is called a homomorphism if for all x and y in g1, phi of x times y equals phi of x times phi of y. In other words, there's this multiplicative property of the function. And of course, when I say multiplicative, I really mean that the function conserves the group operation on either side. And my hint here is, what could make phi not already a homomorphism? So maybe think about that hint while you try the problem, and then we'll come back with a full solution. Okay, so hopefully you had a good go at this problem on your own. Now we're ready to look at a solution. And there's a real big hint written into the statement of the problem here. And that is that this equation right here is very related to this equation right here. Here we have ABC equals XYZ. And here we have phi of A, phi of B, phi of C equals phi of X, phi of Y, phi of Z. The only thing missing from this top equation to the bottom equation is some dependence on the identity element. And that makes me think that maybe something going on with the identity element under this map is what is causing this not to already be homomorphism. So let's maybe take that and look at the best case scenario, which would be phi of E equals E, which is true for all homomorphisms, but maybe that's the only thing that we need in order for this map to already be a homomorphism. So we'll write that as a claim. So claim, and that is if phi of E equals E, it is a homomorphism already. But what that means is that we can redefine our psi just as psi of X equals phi of X. So in other words, this element G is the identity element and there's not really anything to do here. Okay, so let's maybe see how to do this. So first of all, what we wanna show is that phi takes inverses to inverses. And we can do that with a fairly simple calculation, again, using our only tool at the moment. So I'm gonna take E times E times E, but those are all identity elements, which means they multiply together to give you the identity. And then I'm gonna factor this in terms of an arbitrary element at its, and its inverse. So I'm gonna write this as A inverse E times A times E, like that. Okay, so now notice we have the setup that we need in order to apply this rule from here to here. So that tells us that phi of E times phi of E times phi of E is equal to phi of A inverse times phi of A times phi of E, like that. But now notice our assumption is that phi of E equals E. So that means this left-hand side is just equal to the identity. And then this right-hand side is equal to phi of A inverse times phi of A but that gives us a nice inverse mapping property for our function. In particular, this is the same thing as having phi of A inverse equals phi of A inverse. We can like factor the inverse inside the function phi. So now that we have this property worked out, which maybe I'll underline in yellow, we can use this along again with our given property to show that phi is a homomorphism. And that's using a pretty similar trick. So we'll take E times E times E again, which is the identity. 
And then we'll factor that as A inverse times AB times B inverse. And then apply our rule. So applying our rule to the left-hand side will give us this phi of E, phi of E, phi of E, which is just phi of E, which is E by our assumption. And then applying the rule to the right-hand side, we get phi of A inverse times phi of AB times phi of B inverse. But next what we can do is factor these inverses out of the function using this yellow underlined thing. So let's do that in orange, we'll factor this out. And then left multiply by phi of A and right multiply by phi of B. And that's gonna give us phi of A, phi of B equals phi of A, B. So we already have a homomorphism if phi of E equals E. So let's put a little check mark next to this to show that we've proven it. And that really gives us some motivation for how to construct our new function psi. So let's get rid of this proof and then we'll do that. So on the last board, we showed that if phi took the identity to the identity, then it was already a homomorphism. And that gave us some motivation for how to build psi. So we'll need to build psi so that it satisfies this rule right here and that it takes the identity to itself. So let's maybe see how to do that. So after playing around with a little bit, you'll see that the following setup works. Let's define psi of x to be equal to phi e inverse times phi of x like that. But now we'll show that this is a homomorphism by showing that psi satisfies this kind of condition right here. Maybe I'll put a star around this condition right here and that it sa satisfies this claim up here. So maybe I'll put a blue star next to this claim. And then maybe let's put that here cl claim psi satisfies so we'll say this orange star and this blue star, which means it is a homomorphism. So thus, it is a homomorphism. Okay, great. Well, so notice it satisfying this blue star is just totally trivial. I'll let you guys check that in fact. And so we just need to show that it satisfies this orange star. But then if you play around with the calculation, you'll see that we need a little extra fact in order to show that Psi satisfies this orange star. And that is that phi of E commutes with everything in the image of phi. So let's maybe write that as a lemma. So phi of E commutes with everything in the image of phi. Let's maybe write that a little differently so that we know exactly what we want to show. So I'll put it here. So we want to show phi of E times phi of G equals phi of G times phi of E. This is gonna be for all group elements G. Okay, so let's see maybe how we can do this. So we'll do this by creating a triple of elements that satisfy this first line and then applying this second line. So first off, we'll look at E times G times G inverse. So that's most definitely the identity, but it's also equal to G times E times G inverse. Then applying our given property, that means that phi of E times phi of G times phi of G inverse equals phi of g times phi of e times phi of g inverse like that. Now we've got a cancellation rule inside of groups. And so we can multiply by the inverse of this guy on both sides of the equation and we're left with exactly what we need. So we've proven this lemma. So let's maybe clean up the board, have a brief summary before we finish it off. Okay, so let's see where we are. So we started off by looking at a best case scenario and we saw that if phi took the identity to the identity, then we were already done. So in other words, phi was already a homomorphism. But if phi took the identity to something other than the identity, then there was more work to do. Well, first of all, that's a property of a homomorphism, so it's impossible to be a homomorphism and not have this property in the first place. Then we proved a lemma that's gonna help us finish it off, and that lemma is that phi of E 
commutes with everything in the image of phi. So in other words, for all group elements G, phi of G times phi of E equals phi of E times phi of G. Okay, nice. Next, we defined a new function, psi, and that was equal to phi E inverse times phi of X. And we need to show two things in order to finish this off. First off is that psi of E equals E. So notice psi of the identity is equal to phi of E inverse times phi of E, but those are inverse elements of each other within the group, so they multiply together to give us the identity. So this thing is okay. Next, we want to show that psi satisfies the defining property of phi, this thing up here, which I've rewritten over here, and thus by our original claim, which I've summarized up here in this first red dot, we would be done. Okay, so let's finish this off. So we'll assume that A, B, C equals E equals X, Y, Z. And now let's look at Psi of A, Psi of B, Psi of C. Using the definition given right here. So notice that's going to be equal to Phi of E inverse, Phi of A, Phi of E inverse times Phi of B times Phi of E inverse Phi of C. Again, just using this definition of Psi A. But now we know that Phi of E commutes with everything in the image of Phi. And it's really easy to show that Phi of E inverse will also commute with anything in the image just by inverting this um, formula right here. Okay, so that means we can collect all of these phi E inverses and take them to the left. So that's gonna be equal to phi E uh, inverse cubed times phi of A, phi of B, phi of C. But now we can replace phi A, B, C with phi of X, phi of Y, phi of Z because we know that phi satisfies that rule. So we have that this is phi E inverse cubed times phi of x, phi of y, phi of z. And then we can commute those copies of phi e inverse back in between everywhere we need to, to rewrite this as psi of x, psi of y, psi of z. So what that tells us is that our new function psi obeys the defining formula for phi and it has the property that it takes the identity to itself. And so thus by our first claim, Psi is a homomorphism. And that's a good place to stop.